Hi, and welcome to CyberA.IT. My name is Anthony, and I'm your local subject matter expert here for Network Plus. And today we're going to be talking about how different devices and protocols relate to our OSI model. So let's take a look at some of the different types of protocols and devices that we may encounter on networks and see if we can identify what layer of the OSI model they would fit under. So first we have MAC addresses. Now MAC stands for Media Access Control Addresses and we've talked about how MAC addresses are unique addresses that are encoded by the manufacturer onto network interface cards. Each of these network interface cards has a globally unique MAC address, but we typically don't route using MAC addresses. MAC addresses are used for uh, just our layer 2 data link layer. Uh, we can't route using MAC addresses, but we do point information to specific devices to specific network interface cards using their MAC address. Um, our MAC address is what we'll consider as our physical address. It is the, the physical address of the network interface card on our machine. Now, in contrast to MAC addresses, we have IP addresses. IP addresses are able to be routed over networks, so over around the world even. And our IP addresses are layer three in our network layer. Our network layer in our OSI model is often referred to as our IP addressing layer. And as such, our IP addresses fit right in there. Now, our IP addresses are not physical addresses. IP addresses are actually logical addresses that are mapped to a physical address. We have a single IP address that's mapped to a physical network interface card, a physical MAC address, uh, excluding IP addresses that are in our broadcast or our IP addresses that are in our multicast range. But we'll talk about those later in our IP addressing chat in our IP addressing section. But typically speaking, our IP addresses are going to be a logical address that's mapped to a single physical address on a on a network interface card. So as such, our IP addresses are going to be layer three. Next is our EUI64. Now our EUI64 is another name for our IPv6 global unicast. Now our IPv6, our IP version 6, is a much larger uh, set of, of binary digits that we can use to create IP addresses. Our IP, our IP version 6 is a much larger addressing space than our IP version 4. Uh, but we will talk about our IP version 6 and the differences between our IP version 6 later. But one of our IP address uh, classes, one of our IP 6 address types is global unicast. Now global unicast is uh, an address that's specific for a single network interface across the world. So we could send information to a global unicast address and it would be routable around the world to a specific device. Because of this, because our IPv6 global unicast is not a logical address mapped to a physical device, a global unicast address is an address that is specific for a single device. It's considered layer two data link because we don't have to route or tran uh, tran uh, translate that address to a uh, MAC address in order to acquire a data link. Our IPv6 global unicast or our EUI64 would do that for us. It would automatically um, just globally connect to one specific device. Next we have frames. Now frames are our layer two, our data link layer, uh, but they're layer two protocol delivery units. So it's a segment of data with a beginning of an end that we're using on the layer two level. So when we're talking about segments of data and we're referring to them in the layer, uh, in terms of our layer two, uh, refer, we're, we're referring to them as frames. So our frames we'll want to remember are our layer two protocol delivery unit. Next are our packets. Now our packets are going to be very similar to our frames, but they're going to be our layer three protocol delivery units. So when we're talking about transferring data on a level three level, on our networking level, uh, we're going to be talking about packets. Packets, And again, they're just segments of data with a beginning and an end, and we're sending them across our layer three network, and as such, we refer to them as packets. Next we have our switches. Now. Switches are our devices on our network which allow us to connect multiple devices that are on the same subnet. So if we have multiple computers with, this, with an IP address in the same subnet in a room that we don't have to route data to, we'll connect them via a switch. 
Now, because we don't have to route that data, because we don't necessarily need an IP address uh, to communicate with these devices, we do communicate with, our, with an IP address because that's how our data typically communicates. But we don't uh, need an IP address in order to make a connection with that device. We could send out a, uh, we could send out a DHC, D, DHCP discover message out to our network and that's going to refer back to us as an, without an IP address, and people can address us and can send a, uh, say, a DHCP offer a, uh, a message to us specifically without us necessarily needing an IP address. So because of that, our switches are going to be performing at a layer two level, at a data link level, and they uh, map to our MAC addresses. Now we do have switches that can uh, determine who we are and map specific packets directly to us, or we may, and we may have switches that send packets to everybody, and then as it determines, okay, this MAC address is on this port, this MAC address is on this port, or this, computer's, this computer with this MAC address is connected to this port on me, it begins to make those uh, mappings. So because of that, we consider that layer two, because it's working with those MAC addresses. Now, we also have our routers. And routers are sometimes referred to as a layer three switch. Now, they're sometimes referred to a layer, as a layer three switch because they allow us to connect to multiple different networks. They allow us to route addresses, uh, IP addresses, and send data across these multiple different networks. Because we're working with IP addresses, because we're routing data, our routers are going to be layer three. So we need to have sort of an intermediary, and these are our multiple layers, multi-layer switches. Now our multi-layer switches allow our, de our devices that can perform on layer two or layer three. They're devices that may just perform switching functions, but if necessary can also pr be performing routing functions. So these will be considered our layer three switches. Let's finish up with some of the rest of our devices here. Now we also have a hub. Now a hub is sort of like a dumb switch. A hub, a hub just takes in all of the incoming data that it is receiving and then just sends it out to everybody that's connected to it. So it allows us to pass data onto multiple computers in a network, but it isn't going to be smart. It isn't going to do any mapping of any MAC addresses and it's not going to do any mapping of any IP addresses. So it's just going to take in that data and just send it to everyone. So it isn't really uh, doing anything as far as routing. It isn't doing anything with IP addresses. It's just letting us connect from one point to another. So because of that, our hubs are going to be layer two, data link, and it passes the information to everyone that's connected to it. It just takes it and it passes it and it allows us to make a data connection. We're also going to have encryption devices. Now encry encryption devices may be physical devices on our network that perform encryptions at one point and then decryption at another point. Now these encryption devices are going to be layer six devices. Layer six being our presentation layer. Layer six formats our data, does encryption and decryption as uh, among, other, uh, among other forms of uh, data form formats. But because encryption is a type of data format, it is a way that we're modifying our data so that it can be viewed um, or it can be encrypted and then transferred over the network. Uh, our encryption devices are going to fall under that layer six, our presentation, because it's formatting our data. Then we have a cable, and our cable is a very easy to tell is a layer one. It's a physical device, something we can hold. It's something we can plug in and connect. It's going to be a, a layer one physical device. A network interface card is also a layer one physical device. A bridge is going to be a layer two data link device. Now a bridge is considered a layer two device because a bridge provides point to point connectivity. A bridge is going to allow us to connect whether it's through a wireless bridge that we set up from one point to another or an ethernet bridge that we set up. A bridge is just going to provide one point to another point, much like a bridge, uh, connectivity. So we're going to have a bridge as, our, as a layer two device.